Hi, I'm Ranger Mara at Shenandoah National Park. Welcome to the third in our series of virtual programs celebrating wildflowers in Shenandoah National Park. And this spring, as the leaves are starting to come out at the lower elevations first, that's where we're tending to see the wildflowers. As those leaves unfurl, they'll shade out the flowers. So these flowers are trying to bloom now before they get shaded out. And as we go along through the spring, we'll be seeing more and more wildflowers going farther and farther up in elevation in the park. Madison Run Fire Road is uh, called that because it's right along Madison Run. That's the stream here to my left. We've had a lot of rain lately, and so there's a lot of water coming down those streams. That water is very important to a lot of the life in, in our park, including wildlife and plants. So the flowers that you're seeing today are really coming out because of the recent rains that we've just had. So we'll take a look as we go and see how many wildflowers we can find today. I've got a couple down here that we uh, just noticed. I will say that because we're on the boundary, when you're walking along in the park, you may notice some paint marks on the trees. And today you will see some red marks. Those are the boundary lines. So the side of the tree that you're looking at has the, the mark on it and whatever is behind that is the park boundary. So be careful, you know, when you're walking so you know if you're on private property or on park property. Other paint marks that you'll see on trees will be our paint blazes that mark different kinds of trails. They'll be marked blue for most of our hiking trails, white for the Appalachian Trail, and yellow for trails that horses are allowed on. So let's go and see what kind of wildflowers we can find today on the Madison Run Fire Road. We've got a nice patch of chickweed here. This is star chickweed. It's a native woodland flower, and it grows in these lovely bouquets, a large amount of flowers in one place. And this is a low-growing plant. It's related to the chickweeds that you have in your lawns at home, but those are not native. This is a native plant that's always been up here in the mountains, and um, it's just a beautiful little flower. Looks like it has 10 petals, but they're really five deeply cleft petals and that's just uh, an indication of the family that it's in. The uh, chickweed is in the pink family and that means those are flowers whose uh, edges of their petals are either um, short or deeply cleft or cut um, and that's a pinking is another way of, of uh, cleaving the edge of something. So these are star chickweeds, a member of the pink family and they're pretty abundant right now in the lower elevations in the park. Another pretty spring wildflower that comes up in uh, bouquet forms where there's a lot of flowers in one is the bluette, or we should say bluettes because you never just see one bluette flower, but they're beautiful low blue flowers with a yellow center. Uh, also called Quaker ladies for some reason, I don't know why, but uh, they're just a beautiful four-petaled uh, low-growing flower. Um, and uh, we look forward to seeing those in the spring Bluettes are one of the longer lasting flowers, so they'll continue to bloom for weeks and weeks. And even though they're just starting now at the lower elevations, we'll be seeing them all the way up into the park, probably throughout the next, throughout the month of April and into May and beyond. So look for bluettes in the park when you're hiking. While well, we're walking up the Madison Run Fire Road today from the park boundary and this road is an old road. It was here before the Civil War in the 1860s, and it was known as the Browns Gap Road. And many army troops from both sides passed over the mountains on this road. Can you imagine all of those people and equipment and horses and artillery and everything moving up and down this road, all the noise it would be making, and compare that today with the gentle sounds of the Madison Run off to our right, maybe some birds now and then, quite a different place a long time ago.
For a minute I thought it was snowing, but it's actually the, the petals of these service berry flowers. This is one of our early spring blooming trees, the service berry, and it will have uh, little fruits on it later on. Beautiful, welcoming uh, tree of springtime. Behind it, you will see some yellowish flowers all through the woods and along the road here too. And those are the flowering dogwood trees. Those are native trees as well and their flowers are just beginning to open. When you look closely at a dogwood flower, what you see are not the flowers that are the big petal-like pieces, but those are bracts. And the flowers are actually little tiny uh, flowers right inside those bracts. So the actual flowers may not be blooming, but those yellowish bracts have just opened up. Flowers will be blooming uh, pretty soon, any, any time now. There's a beautiful native flower growing right here along the bank. And this is a special one because we don't see it that often. So this is a violet. Violets are pretty common, right? But most of the violets we see are, are your typical blue violets, your common blue violet. And they'll, they'll usually have a heart-shaped leaf. Uh, most violets uh, in the park do. But this is a different one. This is called the birdfoot violet. And its leaves are much narrower. They look a little more like a crow foot. That's how they got their, their name. And they've got this beautiful little yellow, um, you can see the anthers where the pollen is uh, in the center under this little white eye. Sometimes the birdfoot violets will be all purple like this one, or they'll have pale purple uh, petals on the bottom and dark purple petals on the top. So two dark, purple and um, three pale purple. So if we see any more that look like that, we'll stop and, and, and show you. But uh, this is, is just gorgeous as it is, the birdfoot violet. Okay, let's keep walking and see what we can see. Great little garden here of uh, native wildflowers. The largest ones that you see here are uh, called wild pinks. And you notice that some of them are white, <laughs> some of them are pink. And again, these are members of the pink family, just like the star chickweed. And that means that the edges of their petals are toothed or notched, and that's where that pinking uh, comes in. So they're members of the pink family. So wild pink, one of the, the larger uh, members of that family that you'll see in the springtime. Very pretty, low to the ground. And also in this little bouquet of spring wildflowers, we've got some more of our birdfoot violets growing among them. And right here, this little tall white one, this is pussy toes. Pussy toes is a nice fuzzy uh, a flower. It has male and female flowers on separate plants. And they usually grow in little clusters, so all female plants in one cluster, and then nearby there will be uh, male pussy toe uh, flowers. And the uh, female flowers are kind of rounded at the top. They're white, very, very fuzzy. Um, and the leaves are very close to the ground, kind of a grayish green, so it's a little bit different, different shade than the other green leaves that you're going to see. So that's pussy toes. But you can see all of these lovely things in this little uh, garden bouquet right here, as well as these little plants I just noticed. Um, these are blueberries, and they're just starting to get their flower buds. So their flowers will be small, white, lantern-shaped flowers, very attractive to little tiny um, um, bees that are... Um, uh, solitary bees. A lot of our native bees are solitary and they're just the right size to go up in those little lantern flowers of the blueberries and pollinate them. So quite a little group of wildflowers growing here in this one little bank side garden. Here's
here's a native flower that uh, we don't see everywhere in the park. This is one of the few places that I have seen it. It's called lupin, L-U-P-I-N-E, and it will have a tall uh, bunch of flowers that kind of hang down. They'll be purple, both a light and dark purple, beautiful flowers. And they have these distinctive palmate leaves that look like your you know, fingers spread out on your hand, just like this. And in this group right here, I found one little bud coming up way back here, but that's gonna turn into th some flowers in a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks from now. So uh, something to look for uh, on this west side of the park in the kind of farther south end. Um, we're in Rockingham County right now. We've got a nice little group, a clump of daffodils growing here. Now daffodils are not native to North America. They're not um, native to the park but they were favorites of people who lived in the area and they're a bulb and they keep coming up year after year after year so a hundred years later there may still be daffodils coming up where they were planted. Um, these ones seem to be an old-fashioned variety if you think about your daffodils that you have in your yard today, they have a simple set of, of petals that are kind of in the back and then a tube uh, flower that comes out in the front. Well, this one, if you look at it, it's a little flopped over, but it's uh, got the white petals in the back and then this lovely little ring of short, like a short yellow cup. And then inside, look at how many petals there are inside. That's called doubled. Instead of just having one set of petals, there are two or m many more sets of petals. And that's generally the old-fashioned varieties that you could order from catalogs. I don't know which one this is, but it's a very pretty flower to come across. Even though it's not native, it's kind of really neat to think about, you know, how long ago these might have been planted, who planted them, and just the fact that they're still growing after many, many years. We've got a beautiful flowering tree right here. This is the Eastern Redbud. If you're driving through the Shenandoah Valley at this time of year, you'll see these trees along the edges of a lot of our country roads. They love to be on the edge of a forest, um, right by the road. And you can see these ones are growing right by the edge of the fire road here. These are one of the prettiest trees in Virginia. They don't get really tall. They usually get shaded out by other trees eventually but the flowers come out before the leaves and that's what makes them so, so um, um, noticeable right now because there's no green leaves covering up those flowers. Flowers look like little, little um, slippers on, on there. They'll open up and uh, they're a major attracting um, plant for uh, bees and uh, other pollinators. So the Eastern Redbud, beautiful tree, blooming at the lower elevations in the park right now. Well, here we have a different flower. This is a rock-loving plant. It's called moss phlox, P-H-L-O-X. The flowers look a little bit like ones that we saw earlier, the members of the pink family, but they're a different family. They're a similar, but they're different. The flowers have a little indentation on the, on the edges, but they're a different family. Moss phlox is called that because the leaves are very small and they look like moss but they're not moss, they're moss-like. So moss flocks often grows on these boulders at high elevations, we're at a low elevation and here they are, but you can see how it doesn't take much to make moss flocks happy. They don't need a deep humusy soil to grow in, they're just growing right in the cracks on the rocks. So remember when you're hiking in the park, when you're looking for wildflowers to look up, and look at the rocks as well, and you may be impressed by what you see there. Thank you for joining me on this third segment in our virtual walk celebrating native woodland wildflowers here in Shenandoah National Park. Next week, we hope to be a little farther up the mountain. As these trees are leafing out down here below, we'll be seeing more flowers as we go up toward the middle portion 
of the mountain next week. So until then, this is Ranger Mara at Shenandoah National Park.